I want to talk a little bit about Greenland's history before we get started. You already know a little bit, you know about Eric the Red. Uh, he is one of the early discoverers of Greenland. And you know a little bit about Leif Erikson that went out to Vinland along uh, with his father, Eric the Red. In total, there were about uh, four expeditions out to Vinland. And Eric's daughter, uh, her name was Freydis, Freydis Eric's daughter, uh, she was a half-sister, probably, possibly a sister, uh, to Leif Erikson, but she was on two of those expeditions. In the older expedition, we know that the party of Vikings was attacked by Skraelings, that is, Native Americans, and the uh, Native American Indians had something that the Vikings referred to as rods that were being thrown at them using what the Skraelings called catapults. Well, for as far as I know, American Indians never really had catapults in the European sense of the word, but they did have something similar. Uh, they had an addle addle, and the spear from an addle addle does make noise as it goes through the air. The addle addle is a handheld spear thrower launching long flexible darts from its spur. It's deceptively complex and in trained hands can be a most lethal weapon. Okay, wow, that's really yeah. cool. You can really see that thing curve into that, that big arc. You can see how that, that flex is making it kick off from, right. from the launch stick. System. The dart tip resists acceleration. It forces the dart to store spring energy to be released against the spur of the app. So the time to test our new weapon. Dead center. It works. Of course this it works. I'm Atlatl Bob. Now we know that the Indians did have the Atlatl. As a matter of fact, the Aztecs uh, used it quite effectively. And they had it in use at the time that Cortez uh, was attacking them. Now we know that the Atlatl is also effective against chain mail, uh, which is the kind of armor that the Vikings would have been using. Uh, we know that because one of Cortez's lieutenants was killed by an Adel Adel spear. When Eric the Red's uh, Viking men were attacked by uh, Skraelings using the Adel Adel or whatever the catapult happened to have been, they were terrified because they had never seen it before although, frankly, the distant ancestors of the Vikings had used exactly the same thing in the very distant past. In any event, they were terrified and they ran. The problem for as far as uh, uh, Friedrichs, uh, Eric's daughter, was concerned is that she was eight months pregnant at the time and she couldn't run. Uh, so she uh, grabbed one of the swords of the uh, fallen friends that she had and uh, she used that sword, to brandishing it somehow, and she did it so effectively, it scared the Skraelings away. The fourth uh, voyage uh, that uh, was taken to uh, uh, Vinland was actually uh, organized by Fridas, uh, Eric's uh, uh, daughter. And she went into partnership with a couple of Icelandic boys, uh, Helgi and uh, Finn Bogi. And the two of them agreed that they would split the profits evenly and they would each bring the same number of men in each of their ships. Uh, Helgi and Finn Bogi, the, the brothers, uh, got out on time. Uh, Fridas uh, did not get out on time. And when the brothers were gone, she packed a couple of extra men onto her ship. Well, she had made arrangements with her brother Leif, who had built uh, a, a longhouse in uh, Vinland, uh, to use that longhouse, and he said okay. And so the Viking longhouse looks something like this. Curiously enough, the Iroquois longhouse looks kind of similar. In any event, uh, they sometimes call that a, a pigback uh, house, uh, and it looks a little bit like 
a boat that's been turned upside down in some ways. And so when she got there, she discovered the brothers, the, the Icelandic brothers, had already set up camp there, and she forced them out. And that was just the beginning of apparently a, a long line of complaints between the two of them. And eventually uh, she went down uh, to their settlement because they moved out of the log house and set up a separate settlement a little ways away. And uh, she made peace with them, but on her way back, she beat herself up, presented herself to her husband and said that the brothers had beaten her and she demanded revenge. He, he didn't want to go at first, but she threatened divorce and threatened his manhood and everything else. And eventually he got his men together and they went out at night and they killed all of the Viking men at the settlement. But there were five Viking women there and they couldn't kill the women. Friedrich demanded that they be killed, but the men wouldn't do it. So Friedrich picked up an ax and she dispatched them. And then she threatened the people on her group. She said, they can't say anything about this when they get back to Greenland. And so Friedrich gets back to Greenland and she says that uh, the brothers have decided to stay in Vinland over winter and uh, they'd meet back up the next spring. Well, eventually word does get out to, to Leif that what had happened. But she was his sister and he didn't feel like he could do anything to her. So she didn't get exiled or anything. Uh, but nevertheless, thereafter, nobody in the community trusted her. So why were they going to Vinland in the first place? Well, probably uh, lumber or grapes or something else. Uh, but one other possibility is that they were after bog iron. There are bogs on uh, Newfoundland and they do have bog iron. We are talking about the bog iron hunter. And another thing I didn't know is that iron clumps can actually form in bogs. And it is one of the only locations that you can find iron without having to mine. So in bogs, iron forms in the water as rocky clumps, which can vary in size from the size of a pea to a large skull. And this type of iron ore is commonly referred to as bog iron. It was the bog iron hunter's job to look for these clumps in the murky waters and the muddy soils of the wetlands. These people would have a trained eye to spot iron slick, which is an oily film which forms on the surface of the water and indicates the presence of iron ore. When they spotted some iron slick, the bog iron hunter would then prod the area underneath the slick with a staff or a spear or any other large stick and in that way they could find the large iron clumps in the mud. Or alternatively, they would cut out sections of the sediment, then strain them and find smaller iron pebbles. Smelting iron from bog ore was first done during the Iron Age and stayed prominent during that age. But as time went on, in most places it was replaced by mining as the primary source of iron when the mines became more efficient. During the Viking era in Europe, most of the iron was still smelted from bog ore. In Scandinavia and Russia, it stayed the primary source of iron well into the Middle Ages. Even after the advancement of the iron mines, bog ore remained important, particularly to the peasants who wanted to dabble in iron production. Iron made from bog ore will often contain small amounts of silicates, which can form a glossy coating that gives it some resistance to rusting. So bog iron isn't quite as strong as mined iron, and therefore I think it's not quite as good for swords as it is for axes, and therefore the Vikings had a tendency to use axes. Now, the problem with an axe is you can only attack with the axe, so you have to be very, very aggressive. You really can't defend like you can with a sword. Now, what about this thing about Vinland? 
was it really Newfoundland? Well, there has never been any grapes grown in Newfoundland, and that leads to some question about whether or not it is actually Vinland, which means grape land. These are not grapes. These are gooseberries, and they do grow on Newfoundland, and perhaps, although I doubt it, uh, the Vikings mistook these gooseberries for grapes.